America, I want to talk about today. I love my country, and uh, I'm just hopeful as we see days getting darker uh, that there will be some pockets, and those pockets, even within Christendom, seems like Christendom's turning their back on the faith. And I still believe there will be some pockets of those individuals who will stand for the truth, stand for our country, but stand for the truth also. And so I want to talk about America, we're forgetting God. I think sometimes we love our country so much we overlook all of her ills and her problems. And uh, one of the great things is that I see is our country has been systematically for the number of years, has been excluding God, has been turning its back on God, and uh, in a sense they live as if there is no God. And I want to address that this morning, if I could, some. So the title of my message is, America, We're Forgetting God. On July 4th in 1776, the Declaration of Independence became part of our nation. It was a time where America, they were willing to stand up and say, we're separating from England's authority, from her control, from her tyranny, and that's what was going on at that time. Thomas Jefferson wrote the first draft. It was presented to Congress on June the 28th in 1776, and then they needed to make a couple of changes. So he met with John Adams, Ben Franklin, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman on July the 2nd, and they agreed to the Constitution, or to the Declaration of Independence on July the 2nd but it didn't become official until it was voted upon by Congress. And they voted in late afternoon on July the 4th, they voted to accept the Declaration of Independence. And the interesting thing is, is that you know who proclaimed this. It wasn't sent out by the politicians to the state houses. It was sent out to the churches to proclaim the Declaration of Independence. That's an amazing truth. There were 13 colonies at that time, nine in favor. Pennsylvania and South Carolina said no. Delaware was undecided, and New York abstained from voting. One of the most important truths within the Declaration, it's this here. All men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And the phrase that I want you to see there, they are endowed by their creator. That's the belief that there was and there is a creator. A creator who mankind is responsible to. That's so important. Today's humanistic intellectuals, they say God belief is quaint, it's old fashioned. Today's minds think they're too intelligent to have to believe in a God. To believe that there's a God is, today, is political suicide. And there are vicious intolerances of those who do believe, who do have faith. The government even has legalized, legalized means against different opinions. Our government's narcissistic. <laughs> if you complain against it, they go against you and find a way to shut your mouth. That's our government taking place in many circles today. They target religious organizations. And by doing that, trying to stop our voices, they violate our very First Amendment, don't they? To acknowledge a creator makes them accountable to him. And people in our government, they don't want anyone or anything telling them what is right or what is wrong. Because... If you say there is a God, that means he has standards that people are to live by. So they say, no God. Then you remove those standards that you're supposed to live by. Romans chapter 1 gives us a classic example of this. Romans chapter 1 verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now notice he gave them up, okay? Verse 26, 
For this cause, God gave them up unto affections and so on. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God gave them over. He gave them up. In other words, when man begins to sin and won't turn and change his ways, God has the ability to give up on them, to be abandoned by God. Now that shouldn't surprise us if you study the Bible at all. In Exodus, Samson, in Judges 16, 19 and following, says, For she made him, Delilah, made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of the deep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist, now get this, and he wist he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house. Here's a man who had the power of God in his life, he could do supernatural things, but when it came to one day, because he had repeatedly sinned, God abandoned him. And he didn't even know his strength has left. Could that be possible, what's going on in America? Because America continues to go down the slippery road of sin, she thinks God will always bail her out, when in reality is God abandoning America because of her sin. It happened to Israel in Judges 10. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto gods which, have, which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. He said, hey, listen, I'm not going to be with you anymore. You, you know, you've chosen these other gods. Let them take care of you because I'm abandoning you. It happens, the same truth in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Get the gist of the passage. I'm going to get all my verses up out at first, okay? Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and I would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall speak, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And the whole context is, hey, listen, I was there and you said, no, thank you, God, we want to live our own way. And he said, that's okay. When you call out to me, you know what's going to happen. I'm not going to help you, and by the way, I'm going, to allow, I'm going to allow you to reap what you sow, and it's going to take you down. Ephraim, in Hosea chapter 4, verse 17, Ephraim is joined to idols. What does God say? Let him alone. Just let it run its course. They chose others over God. Let him alone. In other words, he's being abandoned by God. Then it states about Christ to the Pharisees in Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. You see, he's saying about the Pharisees, hey, listen, just let them reap what they're sowing. Let their own sins come back on them and take them down. Just let them alone. I'm abandoning them. That's what he's saying. And there's a call cause that's very important there comes a point in time in God's dealings with man and nations and groups of people when he says this enough of your sin and he abandons them 
And when he abandons them, that results in they will eat and reap the fruit of their own choices. And I say to you today without even he any hesitation, America is feeding, reaping on its own choices. She's chosen her sins, turned her back on God, has rejected her creator and the gospel. America has rejected biblical morality and authority, and God says to America, let her alone. Just let her alone. Paul said in Acts chapter 14, verse 15, 16, and saying, sirs, why do you these things? <clears throat> we also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the, and the sea and all things that are therein, who in time past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. If man says we don't want God, he permits them to go on and walk in their sins and pay the consequences of those choices of sinning. Being abandoned by God really explains America's more moral corruption and its confusion. We're not going to experience God's wrath and judgment as a nation because we're already experiencing God's wrath and judgment today. You say, what is God's wrath? Now, don't miss this. We're being deprived of restraining grace. Let me say that again. We're today, part of God's wrath is we're being deprived of restraining grace. In America, sin is so rampant, so widespread, so tolerated with no restraining grace. And without it, our nation is running down to its own doom. Romans 1, 24 says this here, Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through their own lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's what's taking place. And by the way, a first sign of God's abandonment is not earthquakes. It's not tidal waves or mass executions. It's accepting, tolerating sin where man begins to live out his passions and the lust of his own flesh. Man in their own freedom, man turns to perversion. Man has the ability to dehumanize one another, don't they? Man today is turned to sex, drugs, alcohol, abortion, euthanasia. Man has a low view of life, which allows for murders, killers, killings, shootings. There's no sense at all that man has been created in the image of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27 says this, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And if that is not explaining and driving our culture today, you don't know what's going on today. There are people out there just fulfilling their lust of their flesh. Those who... They use their bodies for perverted ways, unnatural ways, lesbians and homosexuals. And as a result of us approving it, our nation, we're being penalized. God's abandonment has and is taking place. Romans chapter 1, verse 28, he says this, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a what? reprobate mind. Their minds is rendered. It means to be useless. Their brains have been destroyed. Their brains don't have moral rationale. Their brains are not reasonable. They can't think straight. They're like mindless beasts. 
And the word there, reprobate, means their minds have become what they were before they ever were saved, if they were saved, depraved. Notice verse 32 of Romans 1. He says this here, who knowing the judgment of God, they know what it's about, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. But notice, not only do the same, they tolerate and they participate in it, but have pleasure in them that do that. Huh? It's amazing what's going on. Just watch TV a little bit. Huh? The Kardashians have run this country. Forgive me, okay? God help us. From dad to children. Huh? What an immoral lifestyle to promote to all of our kids. You forgive me? That's just a fact, Jack. Now, notice. America is experiencing nothing more than God letting go of us to the way our people have chosen to go. And many of Americans have chosen to go without God. It's just that simple. And we ask, why is that? Romans chapter 1, verse 18 following says this, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, now get this, who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. What did they do? They rejected the knowledge of God to acknowledge him, and they suppressed the truth. If that is in America, I don't know what America is then. America, they have rejected the knowledge of God and they suppress the truth of God. That's America today. And by the way, I know there are some pockets and I'm grateful for that pockets, but I'm talking about overall, America has done that. They can see God's creation, yet they try to explain away God they try to say there is no God because they don't want to have to be held accountable to a creator whatsoever. Romans 1.20 says this here, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Man, you look at creation, how can you deny the existence of a God? And then Romans 2.14.15, when, for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. You see, man sees, man senses, he's without excuse. That's just what God says. And man will one day be accountable to Almighty God. He will answer to God. Amen? Amen? God and his truth are within us and without us, and man knows this. And it is normal, it is common sense to believe in God. Amen? But America wants to pursue her sins without responsibility. And here's the tragedy, is the light that we did have has gone out. It's not that man cannot recognize God, but it's man won't recognize God. God's been good, yet man says no thanks to the God who's been good to them. God says, in my last verse I'm going to use today, God, I think so, God says to Israel, 
and I believe we can make application to us. Isaiah 47, 10. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, None seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Today, many of our leaders and politicians, in their statements, what they're saying is, I'm the center of my world. No one sits in judgment of me. And you've heard some of the politicians do that, by the way. And we say, how stupid, how dark, and how foolish. It's like the guy in a hospital bed. He's in a mental ward. And he kept saying, I'm Napoleon, I'm Napoleon. The guy in the next bed said to him, who told you you're Napoleon? And the guy in the bed said, God did. And the other guy said, no, I didn't. (laughs) Amen. It's like a lady who walked into a psychiatrist's office with a duck on a string. And she said, you've got to help my husband. He thinks he's a duck. (laughs) Now, the parallel is this here. What the leaders, teachers, professors, evolutionists, atheists, agnostics, humanists, progressors, and intellectual elitists assume they perceive is not according to reality. Amen? They can try to explain it all the way if they want to, but it's not according to reality. Amen? Voltaire said something I like. He said this, God made man in his own image, and man returned the favor. Man has become God now. Huh? Isn't that true? America has abandoned God and his word. Our government has passed laws for abortion, infanticide, homosexuality, atheistic education paid for by citizens' taxes. They've used our taxes for evil. Our government, they've deceitfully been leading America from her own independence and liberty with God to the one world government with multiple religions as equal. That's what our government's been doing. They've usurped authority over parents to indoctrinate our children with sexual promiscuity, worship of the environment, multiculturalism, which means that the other peoples bring their gods and they make them equal with the only true God, which is an impossibility. That leads to polytheism, by the way, and atheist humanism. But yet our educators do not teach the fundamental academics or simple truths of right and wrong. Their teachings are all separated from the true God because they can't even mention the true God in public schools. Is that right or am I wrong on that? That's a fact. Now, there might be a teacher here or there. Thank God for them. But overall, Martin Luther said this many years ago. He said this, I think, is so important. I am much afraid that schools will prove to be the great gates of hell unless they diligently labor in explaining the Holy Scriptures, engraving them in the hearts of youth. I advise no one to place his child where the Scriptures do not reign paramount. Every institution in which men are not increasingly occupied with the word of God must become corrupt. You leave God out, you become corrupt. That's what he's saying. And that's what, you know, when I was a young boy, we, our school dismissed, we went down the street for Bible school. And then we'd come back. We'd have that for a whole week. Try to do that today. Rising is the persecution of Christians restraining them from leading positions or abusing and firing teachers or government workers who stand up for their faith. Our government discriminates against pro-life. 
if people are not politically correct, you're excluded. Or if you speak up with godly convictions, they call that a hate crime. Amen? Our government nullifies God's laws. It demands control over areas of our life, including our church, our family, that only belongs to the right of God to reign. We have a lot of evil leaders in our government. Thank God for the few good ones. But overall, we have some evil people leaving, leading us away from God. Then, that's our government. What about individuals? What about individual Americans? We, the people. You know, I don't want to forget us. There's little love for God idolatry of things, materialism, entertainment, sports. Can you imagine how much they're paying for free agents today? Some of them score four and five points a game. They're going to give them millions. It's unbelievable. What's, everything's turned upside down. I'll never pay for a ticket for those guys. You forgive me. I would never do it. You know, you can give them millions of dollars. How much do we give our, our, our teachers today, say? Or for... Firemen, for policemen, who are always are begging, please help us, we need to live. Everything's upside down. Little fear or respect of God, rebellion, disobedience, unfaithfulness, lust, fornication, adultery, porn perversion, arrogance, drug abuse, gossip, murder, bitterness, witchcraft, occult, anger, divorce, failure of parents spiritually to have their children being taken over by the government to, to do a job on our kids' minds. You talk to kids today, been in school for a while, and you take a stand against this or that, and they'll say, well, why? They'll disagree with their parents because that's what they're being taught. All I can say is we've sinned. The church itself has looked the other way. While America's spiritual and religious history has been wrongly rewritten, and the church marginalized. Believers today are mostly lukewarm, hypocritical living, live as if there is no God or they've forgotten God. We've abandoned God, His Word, and toward God we're full of apathy, neglect, failure, passiveness, silence, indifference, even Christians have participated in greedily agreeing to bow to government just to get their entitlements, despite of its cost to our children in the future. Now, what I said there was good. You didn't say, man, you should have. <laughs> and I say to you this morning, why doesn't God have the right? Because of what we have done with so much that he's given us to pour out his wrath, to judge us, to abandon us, and leave us to go with our own sins, and that will lead to our doom. Here are a few quotes I close with. Ronald Reagan said, We forget that we are one nation under God, then we will be a nation gone under. Patrick Henry, one of the, one of the signers of the Declaration, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but Christians. Not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's one of the signers. Why don't some of our people stand up and say that today? James Madison, the architect of the Constitution. We stake the whole future of the American civilization not upon the power of government, far from it. We have staked the future of our political institutions on the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves, to sustain ourselves according to the Ten Commandments. Now, not to follow law, but there is a moral code that man should live by that was given to us by God. George Washington, it is impossible to govern rightly without God and the Bible. That's why we're having so much 
conflict today that's taking place. President John Adams, one of the signers of the Declaration, we have no government armed with powers capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. If you take away the morality and the godness, our government cannot function, and that's why it's falling apart today. Thomas Jefferson, who authored the architect of the Declaration, President of the United States, said, And can the liberties of a nation be thought secure when we have removed their only firm basis? A conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties are the gift of God? That they are not to be violated, but with his wrath indeed, I tremble for my country when I reflect that God is just, that his justice cannot sleep forever. And you remove him and his justice won't sleep forever. And then a few years later, President Dwight Eisenhower, great general, president, he said this, <clears throat> without God, there could be no American form of government, nor an American way of life. Recognition of the supreme being, God, is the first and most basic expression of Americanism. Why is that not being said today? And our country goes happily along. They give lip service from time to time to some God, but not the true God. Because if they believed in the true God, they'd humble themselves. I was reading about in Africa, they have these great big ant hills. They're massive. They're like 20, 30 feet wide. 20 feet, 30 feet tall. And uh, down deep, subterranean, down deep there, that's where all the young ants and the queen remains. The workers, what they do, they go out daily to get the food to feed the whole colony. Now, if the workers are out in the field getting food, and if the queen is hurt, or if she's murdered. The worker ants have radar that's connected to the queen. And if she dies, the workers all of a sudden become ner nervous, frantic. They rush around aimlessly, disoriented, and they go into a frenzy, and it leads into their death. Now, the parallel is this here. When a man or a nation believes or lives as if there is no God, all sense of being, direction, is lost. And man goes into a frenzy that ultimately ends up him dying. And when we as a nation says, no God, and mean it, and praise it, and live it, God abandons us. We lose all sense of direction. We become, we go into a frenzy. And man, what he does, he goes to his old nature instincts, and he takes his sin, and he takes it deeper and deeper and deeper, which is actually his doom. Because God allows it to go on, fulfill its course. And the only thing that will, live, that will last will be the fact that he dies. But then he has to stand before God one day. And he'll go straight to hell. Amen? Amen? Our only hope is to turn back to our creator. The only true God. His way and his word. And if not, the wrath of God, him withholding his grace, will continue, and it will get nothing but worse and worse 
and worse. Now, you think 10 years ago and today, has it been a downward spiral or has it not? Us older people, we think when we were younger and the way it is today, it's night and day. It's unbelievable. And that shows you that God has been withdrawing from us. He's allowing us to go our own way. And the only hope is that there would be a nucleus of people that would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm going to love him. I'm going to believe in him. I'm going to follow him. I am going to be the light until he puts out the light. Amen? Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for our country. And the reason sometimes, God, we need to bring messages like this is that we love her so much, we hate to see the direction she's taken, and she needs to be awakened. But the people who passively allow it to go by and just think that it's oh, no big deal, it is a big deal. And I pray you would waken them up. We do pray that there would be enough people that would cry out to you, that you would have mercy upon this nation. But if not, may we be one of those pockets that love you, that stand for you, who obey you, because we love you for what you've done for us. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for new life that you give us when we believe in that gospel. And we praise your name. And everybody we hope that said, you received a blessing from today's broadcast. We would love to have you to visit us in person Sunday at 10 a.m. in New Whiteland. You can watch us live and view past services on our website at gpnd.net. For more information, please visit our website or contact us by phone. Until next week, may God richly bless you as our prayer.